Hello everyone. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a any kind of podcast or video update, um, but a few friends recently came to me uh, kind of in reaction to the to the Russia Ukraine war or operation, having a lot of anxiety and fear and crying, and so you're some combination I think of of um, you know obviously anger probably directed at, at Russia. Um, sadness, just that the fact that that anybody can be be killed in such a conflict, it's a tragedy, and also a fair amount of fear that that you know we're next, or that this turns into a World War Three. And I and and you know I want to I want to kind of respond to to this the best just the best I can, which is obviously imperfect, but. On one hand, I want to talk about world events um, <clears throat> from a different perspective from what you're getting in the mainstream to understand it differently or hopefully more accurately. And then I want to talk about it from a spiritual perspective in terms of how do you um, overcome those feelings to where you can function in your life, I think, and, and feel safe and, and feel, feel good about, you know, joyful about, about your life. <clears throat> So, you know, I'm not going to go through some debate about about world events or some kind of long, you know, description of what's happening because it's very difficult to do. I, you know, I've been following, um, you know, what people call the conspiracy theories, right? But the thing is, ever since 9-11, I've been, I've been, you know, eyes open to the fact that what you see in the mainstream media, which means, you know, what's on TV, what's on your normal, um, you know, websites... Um, the commercial media, you know, what all your friends are saying on Facebook, <clears throat> it's never the truth. Um, you, you, have to, you have to understand, I, I, just at a very basic level, just think for a minute about, first of all, who owns that media? Who's running the world? Who has been running the world for our entire lives? Who are they? I mean, how is it that, that the, this commercial media is working together with the governments in lockstep and, and the largest corporations, right? And we saw it during coronavirus where suddenly it was such a coordinated effort where all these entities work together with this exact same story. And I know if you are if you are a person who, and I'm not saying this with any condescension, I'm saying this out of love for my friends and family who maybe have not been able to take that leap away from the normal mainstream way of, perceiving of accepting what's being handed to us as the truth. So coronavirus, you know, I've had to deal with these feelings that you're feeling. And I've been dealing with them at some level ever since that awakening that I had after 9-11 when I realized the official narrative about 9-11. If you watch there's some good documentaries even on YouTube about about what they what actually happened versus what the media was saying and all the questions that that you must have after understanding some of those anomalies and then digging deeper and deeper and then watching the Iraq war, which is all based on lies in the media. And, and to realize at that time, long time ago, that, that everything being handed to us through the media and the official government story was not true. And that never changed since then. Everything, you know, this is how we're programmed in schools and in the media and, and, and in every sense. Um, to have to go along with this official narrative, which is never exactly true. You know, we know the government lies. We know that in the past, the government lied. We know that the Soviet Union lied to people. We know that communist China lies to people. But for some reason, we think that our current government doesn't lie to us, which is, of course, absurd. You know, what changed exactly? So I think what I'm asking is to take a leap of faith that what you're seeing, I'm not saying there isn't, there aren't bombs going off. What I'm saying is the story and I don't know the story exactly because I don't watch I don't watch the mainstream media, right? I, I, I'm following this from in, with a lot of detail throughout the day from from my Telegram channels, which I trust. I can't just give them to you because you'd have to go back a year and kind of catch yourself up with everything, right? It doesn't make sense on the surface right now. There's a certain work that has to be done to be able to make this shift into understanding world events with a lot more accuracy than what you're getting in, in you know on the news. So when it comes to, to world events and, and you know, the difficult part to understand is that this is not the end. I don't think this is going to be 
uh, suddenly they announce a, an agreement and everything is back to back to normal. There's going to be a lot more escalation. It's going to seem to be getting worse and worse in the coming days and weeks. And then it's going to be ended in a huge crescendo of the most wonderful news, the most wonderful moment you can possibly dream of in life. Because the world is completely changing. And this is just not my theory, my hopeful, wishful thinking. This is based on anybody who's been following. And I can't say a lot of it because I'll, I'll be blocked from, from Facebook and, and YouTube and, and, and censored. This was the plan. And, and there will be many other conflicts or, see, or you know, dramatic events escalating into where everyone is expecting there to be nuclear war. Right? There's going to actually be this thing in the mainstream that there's going to be nuclear war. And it's called taking you to the precipice, the, the final, because people aren't willing to change. They're willing to, to accept anything unless we wake up. And a lot of us have, have woken up throughout, you know, in the past at some point for something that didn't seem right that we started questioning, we did some research. And so we've already, we're willing to change. Maybe, maybe 25% of the population, right? Another 25% probably probably suspects there's something not right, but doesn't doesn't actually have the time or the energy because you're too busy trying to take care of your family and take care of your, keep your job and everything else, which is totally understandable. You're not going to go off and spend your weekend doing a bunch, watching a bunch of, you know, underground documentaries and, and, and following uh, telegram channels. So, so be it. The problem is that at some point, um, because we've been living in a fictional reality, right, you have to go through this crisis. And it's always the case in, in, in life. You know, whether it's a marriage that's just a disaster, you're not, you're not in love, it's not working, you're fighting all the time, you're threatening divorce all the time, you're cheating, whatever it may be. And I've been there. And that was what led to my awakening. It was so painful. It was such a crisis. Um, I guess there's different levels of awakening. There's political awakening, which is one thing. But you need also that spiritual awakening. And when you have both... Then you, then you reach the state of, of being awakened and, and, and overcoming the world, in a sense, dying to, dying to the, the, the self, the self-centered, like, worried about me and worried about my life and my story and my country and my world. And that's where we're all being taken to. So to understand world events, I, I want to just cover it really briefly and then go on to probably even more important things. The outcome of this is not going to be nuclear war, right? They're not going to be invading and your country and killing everyone. This is not about, this is not about, about, you have to understand who, who is Putin? How long has he been in power? Is he stupid? Is he just suddenly one day going to, to risk everything, to risk the whole financial status of Russia, to be cut off from the financial system, to be cut off from the swift banking system? No, he's not stupid at doing this. Why would you, why would you do this? He's had control over Russia for so long, right? There's a reason for this. And the reason is that there's been so much corruption, so much evil happening in Ukraine. This is not what you're getting from the mainstream media. There's, there, the, 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 Ukraine has been, has been a horrible playground for some really bad people, mainly you know, in the U.S., but also you know, George Soros and the people that we thought were good, the, you know, the liberals, who are actually trying to enslave humanity they 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 are engaged in satanic rituals of human trafficking child trafficking murder rape abuse on a massive scale eight million children a year go missing in the world where do they go who's taking these children for what purposes well dig a little deeper and find out you have to understand that in ukraine there were there were a number of bio labs that were engaged in experiments, much like the Wuhan China lab, against humanity. Now, so they were actually targeting, from what I understand, um, some kind of disease that was supposed to attack the Slavs, the Russians, the Eastern Europeans, and, and, and kill massive numbers of people. Because these people who have been in charge of the world have, were using old technology, were using technology designed to enrich them, to enslave us for the purposes of enriching them through oil, uh, current energy policies, and through debt, and everything else. And 
or to a point where the old system cannot continue because of all the debt, because of all the you know the lack of of resources and, and and the pollution in the world. And their plan was to kill most people, okay, in the world. Their plan was to kill eighty percent of the people. The good news is that plan isn't going to happen, despite what the media would hope for, and your and and existing governments, most of them. They want to enslave us. That coronavirus was a lie from the very beginning. Like, you know, the way you're feeling now about this war, that's how I felt about coronavirus. I understood from the very beginning it was an attempt to totally control our lives. For the government and the media and the large corporations, which all work together, they're all owned by the same people, the same very few people in charge of the world, these six satanic people that run the world. I mean, it's hard to imagine as a good person. I couldn't imagine it. I always thought, you know, everybody is, is, has the chance of, of converting into, into love and kindness and that they're, maybe they're misguided. And there are miserable people. Don't get me wrong. They're not, they're, they're living in hell, right? They're, and they're throwing that hell onto us through, through this whole system of ego. But their plan, rather than innovating their way out of this, like finding a new banking system that's, that's not just printing money, like finding new energy, like Tesla energy that can wirelessly power everything and very little energy. Their plan was to just kill us, to save the world. And thankfully, there is a group of good guys or white hats that are at war with them. And this has been a long, long plan, many, many decades in the, in the making that's coming to fruition right now. It's, it's a, it was a detailed plan that cannot fail, that is not going to fail. We're right at the end of it, days and weeks away. And at the end of it, all these bad guys are going to lose power. They're going to be probably most of them executed for what they've done. And we're going to be living in a world where our children can go outside and play, where we're not going broke through debt and taxes. There won't, there won't be income tax. There'll be, a, there'll be, because all the debt's cleared, the government's no, most of our taxes are going to pay for the debt, which was, which is what? Who owns the bank? Who gave that debt? They printed money for the government um, and, and now they take your money, your hard-earned money that you earn at your job or your business, and they take it and they funnel it back to them at a profit that's called interest. And the whole system is like this, where a few people get to enslave the rest of us. So there's going to be a blockchain financial system where there's a set amount of currency backed by gold, precious metals. And the bank's not going to be able to take our money. It's going to be like... Uh, quantum computers monitoring every detail. You're not going to have these criminals taking billions of dollars funneling through Ukraine and Afghanistan to fund terror networks and these militias. So we're going to end these problems by putting in a fair system. We're going to put in fair governments that actually um, have laws that work in our favor, not against us, not just always cause fear and, and subservience to the government. It's going to be such a different world with new technologies new levels of, of, of learning and understanding, this, the school system is going to totally transform. Right now, our kids have to do homework, so much homework, that we parents don't even have a, an ability to, to really teach them what we know to be true about life. They're so bombarded with YouTube junk and with school junk that there's very little space. And when we do get through that, then we just cause them pain because they have to deal with this, this world. Okay, so here we are back to, you're, not, you're probably not hearing this because, you're, because you still don't believe me. And that's fine. You don't have to believe me. Why would you? You know, I've been studying this stuff for so long. And even I sometimes doubt something. Something doesn't quite add up. I don't understand it. But the thing is, as, you go th as I've gone through this, especially in the past um, year and a half, everything that these conspiracies, these channels, which, which you know, there's many people, many different angles saying the same thing, this stuff has come to be true. And the last part that was supposed to come to be true is that it all comes to a precipice, nuclear war, standoff, crash, markets crash, everything crashes, it feels like the end. And only when that happens are we ready to move forward. It's the same thing as the end of a marriage, only when it totally collapses, when you're thrown out, when everybody knows what happened. That's when your life can move forward. Okay, so I want, on one hand, just please understand that you there's going to be a very happy ending. There are some people in Ukraine who are dying. I know something like 500 Russian soldiers and probably a lot more Ukrainians have, have, have made casualties, you know. And unfortunately, it's because these bad people are still fighting. They're fighting very hard. They're fighting in the media. They're fighting 
you know, the propaganda war is still alive and well, even though a lot of the, the, the leadership structure uh, has been already taken out. The war's already, well, I shouldn't say it's already won, but, but we're going to win this. It's the final chess moves. So beyond this, it's not enough to wait for the world to get better to be able to deal with this cope, this, 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 these feelings. Sometimes you feel so, it just feels so strong. You know, even I, I get to that point sometimes too, where I'm just like, oh, yesterday, you know, just the weight of there being a war raging, you know, not, not 30 or 40 miles away from, well, in a country, not 30 or 40 miles away from where I live, um, in Slovakia, um, I think there's some energy shift that you just feel it. You feel the weight of it. And, and you can't go around just like laughing and being happy and everything's fine because you realize that there's a serious thing happening. There, there have always been serious things. There's always been wars. There's been wars in, in Syria, wars in Afghanistan, wars in Iraq. It's just that the media didn't, didn't care to tell you about all that. And in fact, in Ukraine, they're, they're actually making up scenes. They're filming fake war scenes just to get you to, to have this reaction because they want outrage and they want war, they want fear, they want you to forget about the fact that coronavirus was a lie, which is now sun suddenly over. They want you to forget about everything else that's coming out, the truth about the people who have been in charge is coming out, and they want to distract you. So my first bit of advice is please turn off the, the news. Please don't trust what you see on the mainstream commercial. If there's advertisements on TV or on, you know, if it's a normal site that everybody follows, just stop. Stop. Because there's no way you're going to be able to overcome these feelings if if you're being fed this this junk. Right? There's just no way. If you need information, you know. I, I, like I said, I don't know if it's worth it at this point trying to get educated, but there are some documentaries. Write to me. I'll, I'll show you a couple things if you really want to know, if you want to understand more about about this, I will send you some information. I'm not going to just say go and watch this because I think it's too late. I think just wait a few more weeks. And you'll see what I mean in a, in a, in a few days and probably more like, well, by the end of March for sure. But by March 17th, 20, 20 something, it, it'll be well over. But in the meantime, you know, when I was going through my, my, mar my marital crisis, you know, what what's, what helped me through it is, if, if you can find any time at all, if you have a little bit of time on your hands, read a spiritual book. Read something, you know, it sounds like you don't feel like it. I know you're thinking about this. It will take your mind off this, and it will give you that lift of joy and hope for life. And it will, actually, will, it will give you the truth about life, the nature of life. Um, you can read my e-books. You can, you know, start with, start with that if you want to, or something more, more tested and, and it probably... Maybe more effective, I don't know. Um, you know, probably something like Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now, or A New Earth. You could read anything from um, Don Miguel Ruiz, Mastery of Love, or The Four Agreements. You could read A Course in Miracles, if you, especially if you're a Christian who maybe is still struggling and, and with your faith, or with, with the fact that your your faith isn't really providing the, he, the total healing, the total salvation that maybe you feel like you need A Course in Miracles because it uses Christian language and Christian concepts, I think is the right way to go. And it was, and that's what really was the most effective um, teaching tool for me, just to read the text of A Course in Miracles every day. And the important thing is to every day have a spiritual practice. You also should have a meditation practice. Like find a guided meditation. I use, I use um, uh, Meditation Oasis. Uh, just find a meditation there for free uh, on their blog that that resonates with you and just close your eyes, lay down and just don't move for that amount of time and listen to the words and try to do what it's telling you to do. And that's going to settle your mind and, and heal your emotions. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to just sit with these feelings. I'm not, I'm not going to say something here that's going to take away those feelings because you have these feelings because, because you have to embrace them and, and work through and go through them. You can't shut off you know, you can't distract yourself by watching a movie. It's not working, which is why we're having this conversation, which is why these few people that I know came to me and asked for what, I, you know, basically kind of what helped me through this. And I can't help, help you through it by, by, by avoiding the emotions. But what, but what you can do is you can just embrace them fully, completely accept that they are there. These feelings are there. Go even more deeply 
into it, understand it, feel the whole thing about it. If you want to cry, cry all you can and want to. Just accept it as the process, right? And at the same time, as I said, do some kind of spiritual, you know, listen to some vid some talks by Eckhart Tolle. Um, do medita you know, more meditation. And what you're going to find is that after a certain amount of time, probably not today, but maybe tomorrow, you feel better. And the next day you feel actually pretty good. You know, get some sleep, turn off the news and do these things and, you know, understand that you are safe in eternity. You're, you're going to be spiritually awakening now, not just seeing the truth of the world. And they go hand in hand because if you spiritually awaken but don't understand how the world is working, you're still pulled into this fear all the time. And if you're politically awakened but don't understand spirituality, then you're waiting for salvation in the events of the world, which never actually quite come. You know, we're not here to have an easy time in this life. We're here to be challenged like every living creature in this, in this dimension is for survival, for learning. Because at the end of the day, your true identity is not your body and your mind and, you, and, and how you look in the story of your life. Your real identity is consciousness, spirit. Because who is the entity that is observing your mind, who sees the thoughts, who feels the body, who perceives reality. It's soul or spirit, the invisible you, that is in inhabiting the body, that is watching the mind. And that part of you never dies. And to understand this fully is to transcend fear because you know that Nobody wants this life to end. I don't either. I have children. I have a relationship. I have all this stuff to do. I don't want it to end anytime soon. But on a different level, you have to understand that even if you are hit by a bomb or a bullet, you know, you're not really threatened. And that's, and that's the story of Christ on going to the cross and, and salvation and living in, you know, the afterlife means that we cannot fear what they're doing to you in this dimension because you're not because the real identity is your soul, your spirit, your consciousness, life itself, which is one. It's connecting all of us. It's the same within every living being. It it, it infiltrates the entire universe, every bit of matter, alive or seemingly not living, animate or inanimate. There's there's this empty space of consciousness. And this experience of life is where we inhabit this small corner of the universe, which is our bodies and mind. And it seems like that's us. And that's and at some level that is. That's the, the form, the physical form, the temporary changing physical form of us. But when when that form, the usefulness of it passes away, we go on as consciousness. We experience the entire universe as consciousness. And the suffering of this life is gone. The challenges and struggles to keep, you know, feeding ourselves and getting shelter and taking care of people who we love, to deal with people, you know, around us, to understand what's true and what's not true, to create something, to serve, you know, th this is why we're here. And that's not going to just be taken away. And, and, you know, so the, and so, just understand that what's happening in Ukraine is happening for a good reason. There's a war being waged. There are good guys and bad guys, and it will. It, it, there's a reason for it. It's not senseless. Now, it's unfortunate because it never should have come to this. The people who are being fought against, never, against should never have been doing what they've been doing, and they're not stopping, which is why we they had to go in. They had to go in and stop it. There was a threat to humanity that's being stopped. And there's a new, a new world order that's going to be forming with some very different people in charge from what, who've been in charge. And there's going to be some changes in borders and a lot of dramatic events. And, and understand there's going to be a lot of truth coming out. There's going to be a point where all this war, war is dishonesty, war is a game, war is a chess. You're not talking about your next move. But we don't heal. Things don't get better unless there's total honesty. There's going to be a moment where this, the switch is flipped probably through some kind of emergency broadcast. And the truth starts coming out. And at that moment, 
it's our job to just try to accept it, try to move through all the feelings and the resistance to it, because um, it's probably mostly true what's going to be coming out. And it's shocking. So do the work now, because even though maybe only a few days away or a few weeks away at the most, I believe, uh, the sooner we get started, the better. Do the emotional work, do the spiritual healing, question reality, maybe learn a few new things about the other theories while you still have time. So it's not such a shock. And nobody can escape this shock. Some of us have already been through most of it, but there's still more coming, I'm, I'm sure, myself included. There's no way to get through living a lie, living an illusion, which we all have. The whole world order is an illusion. This is not a life is supposed to be. We're not supposed to be slaves. We're not supposed to be constantly in fear. We are supposed to be creating joyfully, loving everyone around us in freedom and honesty. And it's not happening. And it will be. So we have to, to, to end this toxic relationship, we have to go through a, not just suffering, which has been ongoing for a long time, but also crisis, where you feel like you just can't go on. That's the process. And at the end of that is the letting go of all that garbage and a new life. Now, I've been through this in my personal life and my new life without the garbage, without trying to maintain all the illusion. I wish I could have done it without making having any changes happen with the same people around me. I really wish that would have happened. But unfortunately, the very nature of living in an illusion, living in a, in a way that isn't really natural and isn't really honest and isn't really loving, um, isn't freedom, it has to end in crisis unless you're willing to, unless they were willing to just surrender and end it, which they weren't. So here we are. I'll try to do more of these talks if it makes sense or if it's helpful. Please, if anybody, if this is helpful at all, just please let me know and I'll do more. Or if you have any questions, want me to talk about specifically, or like, like I said, show, show you some information, not to convince you of anything, just to show you what my understanding of reality is. If you really want to spend the time and really go through a deep process of questioning everything. Um, otherwise, check out, I mean, I have like 777 meaningful blog posts on my blog. I have two ebooks. I have that, that movie Treetops to just kind of talk through this, what I would say, the thought system of reality, which is, you know, basically unconditional love and, 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 and a wanting of freedom and acceptance of freedom and truth. And that's the way, that's salvation. And, and that's the end of, of this constant living in fear and the beginning of living in a state of no stress and joy because you know that, that the true reality, regardless of what's happening in the world, the true reality will support you, will take care of you. And so right now in this present moment, you are safe. That's, so as we leave this, you know, look around your room, notice the textures and, and, and colors and notice the sun maybe or the clouds and the dust floating in the air. And relax your shoulders and just realize, like, right here, I'm perfectly safe and everything is wonderful. And, yeah, it's now, but it's always now. And if you move through your day with that awareness of now, with the TV and the, and the news off, for the most part, or entirely, you can overcome these feelings and you can actually awaken to the true reality. All right, thanks for, thanks for listening.